perfect great okay so i think we should be good to start in a few i mean few seconds or maybe a um, couple of minutes okay dr poonam singh uh, you there good Am evening I sir audible? good Hello. evening sir i am here whenever uh, you are ready we can start shall we start sir yeah it's i think uh, who gives the go ahead sagar to start wait for a couple of minutes 6 5 minutes start hello hi yes. dr poonam i think we should start can... yeah, yeah, yes yes sure five minutes so people are there yes. yeah yes sir yeah. good evening everyone on behalf of we school institute innovation council i welcome one and all present today for this session all of us would have heard many a times that successful entrepreneurs leverage design thinking and human centered design principle in order to drive towards growth and achieve their long term goals or about business model canvas but what do these terms mean and what is their importance in business process let's try to find these answers today today's session has been organized under the aegis of moe iic mentor mentee scheme focusing mainly on design thinking approach to develop an innovative product or service and creating a business model canvas for the product we are very pleased to have with us our mentee institutes sasmira institute of management sndt Insti university home science college psg modern college of arts science and commerce adt baramati and bhartiya vidyapeet college of hotel management and catering a very warm welcome to the faculties and students from our mentee institutes 
and to enlighten us, enlighten us on the topic of the day. We have amongst us two experts in the field and we school alums, Mr. Rajput and Mr. Bharat Dash. It's my privilege to introduce our guests. Mr. Rajput is an entrepreneur, mentor, and educator for startup and growth stage companies. He is currently an advisor at IIT Mandi Catalyst. Prior to this, he has been associated with Godrej and Boise Manufacturing Company, Vipro Technology, Webware Technologies Private Limited as Managing Director, National Entrepreneurship Network as Chief Mentor, and Learning Skill Development Private Limited as Chief Knowledge Officer, Badwani Foundation as Practice Head, and Enterprise.in as Chief Evangelist. Third, has done his BE from BESIT and Masters in Management Studies from B School. His special areas of interest include entrepreneurship education, online education and training, leadership councils, growth stage mentoring, organizational learning and development, and knowledge management. We welcome you, sir. Our second expert, Mr. Bharat Dash, is the founder of Katha Pratha. He has 15 years of teaching experience and has been visiting faculty at SAS Institute of Management Studies, Wellinger Institute of Management, MGM Institute of uh, Management, NMIMS Mukesh Patel School of Technology, and Sri Sri University. Prior to this, he has been associated with Infosys as software engineer, CTS Tech as senior quality analyst, and HCL Infosystem Limited as territory, territory Manager. Mr. Dash has done his engineering from Father Roderick's Institute of Technology and PGDM Business Design from B School. I now invite uh, Mr. Dash to discuss design thinking. Sir. Thank you, Ms. Poonam, and good evening to everyone. So uh, considering uh, what time frame has been that has been allocated for design thinking I, I am not sure whether we'll, we can have a discussion over design thinking but definitely an introduction to what design thinking is and uh, with the different type of audiences that we have today i'm sure that we will have to look at design thinking as a as a holistic approach and not just uh, for any particular domain and or for even a particular product so without any further delay, let me just start with uh, what design thinking is. So I'll keep it short with respect to what design thinking is, what is the most famous or the most popular model or steps of, of approaching design thinking. So uh, I hope I can share the screen. Yes. Sir. Is the screen visible to everyone? Puna? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, it's okay. visible. Yeah. Thank you. So what is design thinking to start with? So I'll just, uh, the, there can be multiple definitions to it, depending upon uh, whom we are talking to. Are we talking to a client who is in, already into business? Are we talking to students? Are we, are we talking to a designer? So we can have multiple definitions. I'm quoting Tim Brown, the CEO of IDEO with respect to what design thinking is. And uh, again, to start with, let me just, Tell you that design thinking, the approach is very different from the word design itself. So, when we listen to the design thinking, I, I, I guess uh, I can use a bit of Hindi also. When we listen to design thinking, we, we, we assume that it's related to the only the outer appearance of something, the look of it, or maybe the feel of it, of a product or a service. Sirf bahar wala part design nahi. The normal, the normal use of the word design in our day-to-day -day, uh, conversation is such that we assume it's only the external look and feel, but it's not like that. When it comes to design, it's way beyond design in terms of product and services. It's way beyond just the outer look of it. And when it is design thinking, it's an altogether different uh, approach or altogether different framework. So here we are talking about design thinking, the framework of solving any problem. So the, the definition that we can take for design thinking is something like this. Design thinking is a human-centered approach to innovation that draws from the designer's toolkit to integrate the needs of people, 
the possibilities of technology and the requirements for business success few critical words in the definition or few words that are that characterize what design thinking is so here design thinking is a human centered approach so what happens is and I, I, I assume that there are people who are belonging to textile background or coming from uh, catering uh, areas so jab hum koi bhi business launch karte hain ya fir koi bhi business idea koi product launch karte hain ya fir uske upar kaam karne jate hain our, our entire focus is on what we are offering so we all go through the same uh, same phase you know when we are in college when you are in institutes and we have ideas and everything so jo idea aata hai that idea itself is centered around what we are offering however design thinking forces us compels us to first start with for whom we are offering so it's a user centered or human centered approach किसके लिए हम कर रहे हैं क्या बना रहे हैं क्या दे रहे हैं क्या बेचने वाले हैं क्या ऑफर करने वाले हैं ये सेकेंडरी है ये बाद में आएगा पहले अंडरस्टैंड फॉर हुम वी आर मेकिंग इट सो इट्स द ह्यूमन सेंटर्ड अप्रोच व्हेन इट्स सेंट ह्यूमन सेंटर्ड अप्रोच हमारे पूरे सोच व्हेन वी आर स्टार्टिंग अ बिजनेस हमारा पूरा सोच जो है इट विल वर्ल अराउंड इट विल मूव अराउंड अ कोर विच कंसिस्ट ऑफ द एंड यूजर ओके सो सेंटर में एंड यूजर है जो हमारा प्रोडक्ट हमारा सर्विस यूज करने वाला है ह्यूमन सेंटर्ड अप्रोच टू इनोवेशन दैट ड्रॉस फ्रॉम द डिजाइनर टूल किट नाउ थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ अयर टू इंटीग्रेट द नीड्स ऑफ द पीपल तो जो यूजर सेंटर में है उसको क्या चाहिए द नीड्स ऑफ द पीपल द पॉसिबल देन द पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी उसको जो चाहिए करेंट सिचुएशन में या फिर करेंट टेक्नोलॉजिकल एडवांसमेंट के को या ध्यान में रखते हुए what we can offer and the requirement for business success yes we are doing it for business uh, for commercial purpose yes we are doing it for profit yes we are doing it to make sure that we can have a, a, a profitable firm but keeping the user at the center so if we can if we can just summarize this in a small diagram design thinking is something which will talk about this three important terms users desirability technological feasibility and economical viability user ko jo chahiye jo pasand hai jo uske kaam ka hai that's desirability technologically keeping everything in mind not just uh, computer technology every every technology that is available right now technologically jo hum abhi offer kar sakte hain its feasibility and then of course we need to also consider whether it is economically viable ye uh, प्रॉफिट करके देगा एटलीस्ट इट विल नॉट गेट इन टू लॉस और इट विल बी एबल वी विल बी एबल टू स्केल अप सो दीज थिंग्स आल्सो शुड बी कंसीडर्ड बट अगेन एवरीथिंग रिवॉल्व्स अराउंड द एंड यूजर सो सेंटर में कौन है द एंड यूजर द हेंस द ह्यूमन सेंटर्ड अप्रोच ऑफ डिजाइन थिंकिंग नाउ आई होप द डेफिनेशन मेक्स सेंस टू अस सो द आइडिया दैट वी हैव राइट नाउ इन आवर माइंड अबाउट ये बिजनेस आइडिया है इसको इंप्लीमेंट करना है So, उस आइडिया को हम जब देखते हैं जब आग बन करके इमेजिन करते हैं तो सेंटर में हमारा एंड यूजर आना चाहिए उसके आजू बाजू ये सारी चीजें आए ओके सो एट द सेंटर वी हैव गॉट द एंड यूजर तो ये हमारा लेट से वी आर डेवलपिंग समथिंग फॉर चिल्ड्रन सो एंड लेट से टॉय फॉर अ टॉय फॉर चिल्ड्रन ऑफ द एज ग्रुप ऑफ टेन टू फिफ्टीन ईयर्स तो ये बच्चे जो है टेन टू फिफ्टीन ईयर्स दे बिकम द and user and they are at the center now how to approach so these are the so these are the this is our target this is our audience this is our end user ab approach kaise karna hai so if this is design thinking the manner in which it is implemented or uh, it is brought in action is with the help of the popular five stage approach or the five stage model if we type design thinking and if you go if we look out for the different stages or steps of design thinking you will come up come come up with multiple uh, models so there will be a four step approach there will be a three step approach seven step approach even eight ten step approach bahut sara dikhai dega but the most common one the most uh, accepted one and the most popular one is stanford model design thinking uh, framework which is the five step approach so this five step approach to design thinking consists of uh, empathy define ideate 
प्रोटोटाइप एंड टेस्ट अगेन मैं बार बार वही कह रहा हूं अगेन द यूजर इज एट द सेंटर तो इफ द यूजर इज एट द सेंटर ऑफ आवर अप्रोच टू प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग और टू फॉर अ बिजनेस आइडिया देन वी हैव टू स्टार्ट विथ एम्पथाइजिंग द यूजर द the idea that we have in our mind and we uh, we all have whether we are going to implement it or not we all have a idea for uh, for for starting our own business the idea that we have in our mind for the time being let's keep it aside because the idea is right now when we are starting the idea is a solution and design thinking will force you not to start with the solution so you have to start with the end user and some questions in your mind not solution so pehle to unko samajhna hai jo end user hai unko samajhna hai so that's empathy for us so we have to start with empathy uh, let me just clarify one thing do in this diagram that you see on your screen the arrows are pointing in one direction it's not always the case it's not a linear approach at all it's a cyclical approach i'll come to it at the end of uh, my, uh, my the, the slides once again so though it is pointing empathy define ideate prototype test it's never a one way or one time activity it's something which is cyclical and we will see how it is so first let us start with empathize end user hai hamara center mein pehle usko samajhna hai so usko kaise samjhenge with the help of something called as empathize so we have to empathize with the end user unko puri tarah samajhna hai my empathy now of course there can be uh, uh, empathy by the way is the most critical important significant step in design thinking yahan agar chook hui yahan agar gadbad hui to aage ke sare steps waste hain so we will not be able to uh, conduct them properly so kyunki user ko hi humne sahi dhang se nahi samjha hai so once we only once we are able to understand the user well will be able to carry forward with the solution part so we have to understand the end user so end user se milna hai we have to talk to them so engage so empathy is an ability to understand and share the feelings of another person so we have to uh, we do for conducting empathy we have multiple tools we can meet them we can see them we can observe them we can uh, uh, ask them so in any case we have to engage with them preferably in a surrounding which is their natural surrounding with respect to the offering or with respect to the product that we are thinking about so engage or talk to the end user or interact with the end user observe their world dekho ki wo kaise hain so if you are talking about children so 10 to 15 years jo age group ke jo bacche hain unko dekho observe their world how they behave the words they use the feelings they have what makes them feel irritated what makes them feel happy with what uh, with what they get enthusiastic with what there is dullness in them so every characteristic with respect to the end user we have to observe while observing we have to keep our judgments aside we are not there to decide or judge what they are doing is right or wrong good or bad we are there to observe without any judgment so hence i i say this again and again to the students whenever i take this empathy is not a easy stage to conduct or to to properly conduct this stage one requires a certain degree of maturity ye har har ek ki baat nahi hai so you have to be really really empathetic understand the word empathy in order to empathize with the end user तो समझो उनको उनके प्रॉब्लम्स उनके शॉर्टकमिंग्स उनके लिमिटेशंस एंड द द कीवर्ड उनके पेन पॉइंट्स उनके पेन एरियाज कहाँ उनको तकलीफ हो रही है कहाँ उनको अच्छा लगता है क्या अच्छा लगता है कैसे कलर्स कैसे फॉर्म्स कैसा फील उनका ओवरऑल शेड्यूल टाइम टेबल एवरीथिंग एज मच एज यू कैन कलेक्ट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू द एंड यूजर सो दैट्स एम्पति फॉर एस एम्पति के अंदर one thing that uh, if if you look at the overall design thinking uh, the steps okay the five steps they go in a manner uh, which is like going wide and then narrowing down going wide and then narrowing down so empathy first stage hai design thinking ka where you have to go as wide as possible what is the meaning of as wide as possible collect all the data whatever comes your way 
विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू द एंड यूजर नो फिल्टरेशन ओवर हियर कोई फिल्टर नहीं कि ये हमारे काम का नहीं है हमारे प्रोडक्ट रिलेटेड नहीं है या हमारे सर्विस रिलेटेड नहीं है या फिर ये 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 हमारी अगर फॉर एग्जाम्पल एट्स चिल्ड्रेन एंड विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू टॉय तो शुड बी शुड बी फोकस ऑन हाउ द चिल्ड्रेन बिहेव और हाउ द चिल्ड्रेन टेक डिफरेंट सब्जेक्ट जैसे हिस्ट्री जोग्राफी में कैसा है या फिर साइंस कैसा लगता है मैथ कैसा लगता है सो अगर हमने पहले से सोच लिया कि एकेडमिक्स इज नॉट एन एरिया दैट वी आर फोकसिंग ऑन वी आर फोकसिंग ऑन एंटरटेनमेंट वी आर फोकसिंग ऑन देर अम्यूजमेंट सो हम टॉयस पे ध्यान रखें तो हम क्यों एकेडमिक्स में जाए सो दिस इज नॉट द केस इवन एकेडमिक इंटरेस्ट will be helpful to us while designing the final offering so here we the scope should be as wide as possible in the empathy study whatever we can get about the end user we should collect it and note down it ideally video recording audio recording noting down everything should be done during this stage of uh, design thinking so first stage empathy assuming that we have collected all the data all the information about the end user now what to do ab sare pain points sare problem areas sare sabko to hum solve nahi kar sakte so we have to limit our focus to so, itna sara information humko mil gaya for of uh, for of the end user acha i i keep i keep saying this to all my students okay empathy study agar aapne ek bar acche se kiya again listen to this empathy study with respect to a particular uh, टारगेट ऑडियंस और एंड यूजर अगर आपने एक बार अच्छे से किया सो यू डोंट जस्ट गेट अक ऑफ योर प्रोडक्ट बट यू गेट अ होल्ड ओवर द मार्केट सो दिस इज अ डिफरेंस एक बार अच्छे से एम्पति स्टडी करें तो आपको मार्केट समझ में आता है मार्केट जब समझ में आता है तो यू कैन हैव मल्टीपल ऑफरिंग फॉर इट मार्केट समझना प्रोडक्ट समझने से काफी ज्यादा कॉम्प्लीकेटेड है और एक, एक बार अगर आपको समझ जाता है यू कैन यूज इट इन मल्टीपल वे सो एम्पति स्टडी ऑफर सो after understanding the end user let's focus our attention on what we are going to solve so bachcho ko humne samjha so let's say 10 10 years 15 years ke bachcho ko humne samjha unko kya liking hai disliking everything we understood now we are to narrow down on the problem areas on the pain point on the issues that we are going to solve so that is the defined stage from a wide scope now we have to filtered and have a focused approach on where we are going to focus on so let's say toys so we are going to focus on toys which will help children in learning mathematics i mean just i'm taking a, something like that so we understood that mathematics from from the discussion from from empathy study we understood that they don't like mathematics but they are interested in playing games so can we have a focus area of developing toys which can help them in learning in studying in understanding mathematics so just simple example so we are bringing our focus to one particular area one particular small area where our attention will now be focused on okay now the few things that we should keep in mind in the defined stage are the second stage designers put together just a second for designers put together their findings and understanding that they have gathered in the empathy stage so jo bhi humko samajh mein aaya we list it down and then we select we narrow down note down every observation and findings and analyze them to define the core problem so which problem area that we are going to focus here the definition should be very very complete crisp and easy to understand for everyone in the team uh, i said team because design thinking is best implemented when it is carried out in a team of diverse people collaboration acha hota hai aur isse multiple ideas aate hain maybe uh, we can discuss on this more on some other day but yes as a team you should approach it single person ka bias zyada rehta hai so note down every observation and finding and analyze them to define the core problem area that we are going to focus it is imperative that the problem statement should be defined from the user's point of view not how we see the problem but how the user sees it so students find or children find it difficult to understand or to like mathematics but they enjoy playing with toys so the defined statement could be with respect to student can learn or uh, 
to, uh, for example like how might how might we statement is a common way of uh, approaching defined statement so how might we make mathematics more interesting with the help of toys for children in the age group of 10 to 15 so ekdam simple tarike se sabko samajh mein aaye team mein us tarike se aur comprehensive tarike se isko define karna hai now this definition the the def, the the problem area that we are going to define over here is very very critical because aage ka jitna bhi hamara kaam rahega uh, effort rahega will be focused on solving this problem statement okay so defining the problem statement over here is it's okay if we take one day two day or even a week to uh, finally define uh, the problem area properly so that everybody understands and agrees to it because otherwise agar एक के भी मन में प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट को लेके डिस्क्रिपेंसी है देन इट माइट बी एन इश्यू गोइंग फॉरवर्ड बिकॉज फिर सॉल्यूशन उस तरीके से नहीं आएंगे और फाइनल आउटपुट भी ऐसे नहीं मिलेगा सो वंस वी हैव डिफाइंड आवर प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट नाउ वी गो टू द इंटरेस्टिंग पार्ट ऑफ इट आइडिया जनरेशन वी लव दिस ऑल ऑफ अस लव दिस पार्ट इज इट जनरेटिंग आइडिया अभी भी अगर मैं आपको बोलूँ की ये प्रॉब्लम है इसको सोल्व करना है बच्चों के लिए मैथमेटिकल टॉय बनाना है बाई इवन इन स्प्लिट ऑफ अ सेकंड यू विल हैव मल्टीपल आइडिया The problem is, the human brain is such that we directly jump on to ideate stage. So ideate stage is where we start the solutioning part. Up till we have not talked about the solution. Up till we have not talked about the final offering. Up till we have not talked about the whole thing. Up till we have not talked about the whole thing. Up till we have not talked about the whole thing. Up till we have not talked about the whole thing. Up till we have not talked about the whole thing. Up till we have not talked about the whole thing. Up till we have not talked about the whole thing. Up till we have not talked about the whole thing. Up till we have not talked about the whole thing. Up till we have not talked about the whole thing. Up till we have not talked about the whole thing. Up till we have not talked so the the way uh, the way we saw earlier empathy was having a wider scope in define we narrowed down on the problem areas on the problem statement that we want to focus on with respect to this problem statement how many ideas we can generate so we are again widening the scope no filterations nothing over in the uh, nothing no limitations with respect to idea phase idea phase mein we go as wild as imaginative as creative as possible जैसा आइडिया आ रहा है जितना भी साइंस फिक्शन हो या आउट ऑफ द आउट ऑफ द बॉक्स इज द बज वर्ड सो जैसे भी थिंकिंग है नो लिमिटेशन ओवर हियर द मोर डाइवर्स टीम वी हैव द वेराइटी ऑफ आइडियाज दैट विल बी जनरेटिंग इन द आइडियट फेज विल बी द काइंड ऑफ आइडियाज दैट विल बी जनरेटिंग इन द आइडियट फेज विल बी दैट फ्रूटफुल एंड दैट इंटरेस्टिंग थिंक आउट आउटसाइड द बॉक्स टू आइडेंटिफाई क्रिएटिव सोल्यूशन डो नॉट फॉलो द स्टूडियो टाइप्स फॉर सॉल्विंग द प्रॉब्लम Here, जैसे कि हमने एम्पथी स्टेज में बोला था जजमेंट नहीं रखना है ऐसे ही आइडियट स्टेज में इनिशियली वेन यू आर शेयरिंग द आइडिया वेन यू आर कलेक्टिंग द आइडिया डोंट हैव एनी फिल्टर अटैच ऐसा नहीं बोलना है इफ समी सेज दैट लेट्स क्रिएट अ मैथमेटिकल टॉय मेड आउट ऑफ ग्लास लेट से आई कैन सी सम ग्लासेस ओवर ग्लास का बनाते हैं सो इमीडिएटली द थॉट माइट कम की ग्लास डेंजरस है कट सकता है ये सो दैट फिल्टरेशन शुड बी केप्ट असाइड फॉर द टाइम बींग इट शुड बी येस इट्स अ न्यू आइडिया येस इट्स अ डिफरेंट आइडिया लेट साइट इट डाउन ईच एंड एवरी आइडिया डिस्कस्ड इन द आइडिया स्टेज इज क्रिटिकल इफ नॉट फॉर द करेंट प्रोडक्ट और द करेंट प्रोजेक्ट दैट यू आर वर्किंग ऑन बट इट कैन बी वेरी हेल्पफुल इवन गोइंग फॉरवर्ड so think outside the box to identify creative solution do not follow any stereotype for solving the problems it can be wild creative jaise sochna hai soch ideation encourages free thinking very important word over here free thinking no limitations to come up with as many ideas or solutions as possible identify the best solution to the problem only once you are done with all the ideas that is coming from the team bas ho gaya abhi aur koi idea nahi aa raha then we can stop we can take a pause and now we start narrowing down on or start up, applying some filter uh, filtrations uh, filtering process ki inme se kaun sa hame choose karna hai so here we are going to sort it out ideation phase uh uh whichever uh, phase we are in design thing whether it's empathy whether it is define uh, ideate we can have different tools for approaching the stages so one of the most common tools that we have for ideation phase is brainstorming jahan hum baithte hain as a team we have we keep the problem at the center we keep the user at the center and this is the problem area that we are solving the the the, the focus area of our discussion and then we 
throw ideas okay we throw ideas and we live down we keep a track of it so after that we now have to shortlist the best ones prototype again one one uh, stage of design thinking which generally people tend to neglect generally because now we are so happy so enthusiastic ki idea mil gaya and trust me apna idea agar select ho jata hai ya fir humse jo idea ban ke aata hai we are so enthusiastic and so positive about it so humko lagta hai this is the solution ye fail hoga hi nahi and itna sara socha hai itna acha and we we always feel that this idea is the best one it's never going to fail but aisa nahi the best of the best ideas fail and it, if it has to fail it will fail so how to check whether it is going to fail or how to minimize the chances of failure is by developing a prototype as we all know prototype is a rough sketch of the offering or of something that we are that you are building so prototype can be uh, of different uh, fidelity bolte hain usko so it it can be of different nature a prototype can be a simple rough block diagram in a notebook drawn by you it can also be made up of actual material it can be working prototype also so low fidelity medium fidelity high fidelity alag alag type ka prototype hota hai depending upon what is the scope of the project what is the budget that we are having what having with respect to money also and also with respect to time kitna hamare paas paisa hai time hai us hisab se we can we can have different uh, prototypes being uh, applied but generally it's a good idea to start with sketching and now nowadays we have multiple software also uh, available for prototyping so we can actually draw 3d diagrams we can we can uh, 3d printers ke sath hum usko for example toys we can actually print it we can see how it's working or how it looks like how it uh, how it appears so prototyping is that stage where we implement the selected idea again in prototype we jitne sare ideas aaye sabke prototypes hum nahi bana sakte so we have to narrow down so from a wider scope we have to again narrow down select the best of the ideas and then keeping the technological feasibility in mind keeping the economic viability in mind we have to design a prototype according so uh wire frames Uh, wooden clay past plaster of paris uh, steel or uh, uh, even the best nowadays the best thing is you can have software uh, you can use software for developing a prototype uh, we should keep this in mind that prototype is 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 a stage not just applicable for products but also very much applicable for service industry also so service industry mein bhi aap role play wagaire kar sakte ho for example you have catering business and you are developing uh, you are starting up with a new restaurant so you can have Uh, the 3D model of the restaurant, how it looks like, the floor space, everything uh, in 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 your laptop or uh, in your computers. You can actually have you can have role plays. A uh, waiter, how it will move, how it will work, how it will talk, how it will be talked about, kitchen, how it will be. So you can you can develop that. So even for service industry, a prototype is a must and helps us to understand how what could be the shortcomings in our final offerings. So few of the important points with respect to prototype: create several first cut version of actual product, replicating some special features of the product. Prototypes are tested by group of people outside the design team. So within also and outside also. So एक बार prototype बन गया. So prototype helps us to minimize the risk. How? By by coming across the failures or probable failures well before they are actually in the market so failure aisa nahi hai ki failure hoga nahi hoga so better to fail early fail fast fail repetitively and learn from it before we actually launch it in the final market so jo taiyari karni hai jo rehearsal karna hai wo yahi pe kar lena hai so hence uh, this need to be tested by the end user also identify the areas of improvement and also confirm which features are accepted well by the users select or reject features accordingly so depending upon kya acha laga end user ko kya nahi acha laga is prototype is uh, so we can have multiple prototypes for example toys ko leke we can have a glass ka bana hua we can have a steel we can have wooden we, just uh, just taking the case of material we can have a uh, design of also look also so alag alag cheezon ka hum fir uska feedback lete hain while we are testing the prototype it's always advisable film it record it so that uh, it can be viewed reviewed again and again and the changes that are required can be implemented uh, in the next iteration
So identify the areas of improvement and also confirm which features are accepted well by the users. Select or reject the features accordingly. Prototype, as, as, I, as I just mentioned, it never goes alone. Prototype always goes hand in hand with testing. So prototype bana diya, yahi final hai, no. So prototype bana diya, we have to test it with the end user. We have to test it within the team also and also with the end user who are going to use it. And then depending upon their feedback, depending upon their, uh, can I just, uh, annotation is there, okay. I think annotation is visible. So we can again make the changes and iterate the cycle again and again. So prototype test kiya, jo feedback aya, jo changes karne hai, usko fir se implement kiya prototype mein, aur fir se test kiya. So this cycle goes on again and again. Now, it's not just that we have to, we can go back only till prototype stage. Uh, let me finish with test and then I'll come to that. Right. So testing here and the test is the last stage of the five state uh, model. The final product is designed on the basis of the observation given by the user during the prototype stage. In the test stage, also the product goes through quite a few changes and the team continuously refines it to make the product more suitable for the end user. Testing can again be done in different ways. You can have, depending upon the scope of the project, depending upon the budget that we have, it can be a controlled environment testing, jo lab ke andar hota hai, ya fir, you know, simulation testing, hota hai, ya fir it can be an actual uh, open environment testing, jahan pe thoda sa test market liya jata hai, ek, ek chote town mein, ya fir, ek chote area mein launch karke dekhte hai, pilot launch karke dekhte hai, fir uska feedback lehte hai, before we go a uh, pan India or a, or, or a wider audience, a wider market mein launch karne se pahle. So depending up, again, it depends on factors like cost and uh, time. So testing, testing hua, agar fail hua hai, so again, go to prototype. Prototype may changes kiye, fir se test kiya, fir se agar fail hua, again go to prototype. Now, if this cycle is getting repeated again and again, again and again, and if you are observant enough of the feedback of the end user, we might have to go back to the defined stage and change the uh, definition of the problem statement also. So, kabhi kabhi hum jo defined stage may be galti ho sakti hai So, we can, we design thinking gives you the flexibility, the agility to go back even till the defined stage uh, or even empathy stage of Dubara conduct kar sakto. Hence, it's a cyclical iterative process and not a linear process. And that flexibility is one of the highlighting feature of design thinking. And again, that requires maturity. Uh, don't get rigid with respect to ki itna sab kaam kar liya hai, uh, itna acha project tha, itna acha idea tha, isko to Pass hona hi tha, isko to success hona hi tha. Be flexible enough, understand the user needs change from time to time. For example, pre-pandemic aapne test kiya hai, product bana hai, post-pandemic matter alag ho sakta hai, puri tarah change ho sakta hai. So, better we understand the changes in these stages and implement it accordingly. Okay, so I have five more minutes uh, exactly or maybe just on time. Uh, 6.40 was what I said. So, if whatever we have discussed till now makes sense to us, so we saw what is design thinking, a user-centered approach for problem solving. What are the stages of design thinking or how to approach, how to implement design thinking? So the five stage model of empathy, define, ideate, prototype and testing. If you have understood this, and if I ask you this question at the end, what are the pillars of design thinking? Is we have to understand what is design thinking ke liye kya zaruri hai? Kya important hai, kya critical hai. Which are the words out of the out of the out of the list that we have on our screen, which design thinking is based on? For example, empathy, collaboration, sympathy, ideation, thinking outside the box, selling, and solutioning. Okay. So if I ask this question, ki select the words that are closely associated with design thinking. So which are the words? So by now you must have understood the answer, but it's also critical for us to know why the options, which are not the correct answer here, need the focus. So empathy, definitely it's a stage collaboration. We said that design thinking works best if we have a team of diverse people coming from different backgrounds, uh, because they will have different kinds of ideas and different kinds of uh, perspectives. Sympathy, no. So I hope we understand the difference between empathy and sympathy. Sympathy, hame, sympathy is a judgmental attitude. We are not here to judge anyone or saying that, ah, bura hua, hua, not like that. 
the way things are, we have to accept it. We have to understand it and not to judge it. So keep sympathy aside. Ideation, yes, we have to come up with a lot of ideation and thinking out of the box helps us to come up with varieties of solution. Selling, no. So the 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 one of the core ideas of or the core ideas of design thinking is not about selling. Selling as a philosophy existed, and if, selling is a process, but then as a philosophy of product solving or as a philosophy of a business model existed long back. Abhi nahi hai. Product acha hai. यूजर को ध्यान में रख के बनाया गया है तो सेलिंग का जो पुश है वो ज्यादा नहीं लगेगा और वो स्मूथ फ्लो होगा और कस्टमर उसको जल्दी एक्सेप्ट करेगा विदाउट मच ऑफ अ सेलिंग एटीट्यूड सॉल्यूशनिंग द आंसर इज यस वी आर ट्राइंग टू सॉल्व बट द आइडिया इज नॉट टू हैव अ सॉल्यूशनिंग अप्रोच वी सेड दैट डिजाइन थिंकिंग के अंदर द फर्स्ट टू स्टेजेस ओनली टॉक अबाउट द प्रॉब्लम So, जैसे होता है ना हमारे नॉर्मल क्वेश्चन पेपर में आप जब एग्जाम देते हो सो इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड द क्वेश्चन इवन इफ यू डोंट नो द राइट आंसर ऑफ इवन इफ यू डोंट नोट इज द एग्जैक्ट आंसर वी कैन राइट समथिंग बट इफ यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड द क्वेश्चन इट सेल्फ वी कैनॉट मूव अहेड सो हियर ऑल्सो इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस टू अंडरस्टैंड द क्वेश्चन सो इट्स ऑल अबाउट अंडरस्टैंडिंग द एंड यूज द सोल्यूशनिंग इज a later stage or uh, is a, is, a, is a step that we are going to implement but definitely not one of the pillars of design thinking so empathy be empathetic collaborate with your partners with your team have multiple ideas and think out of the box and definitely prototype and test okay so with that note i'll take a pause thank you any questions or anything you can ask me dr poonam over to you yes sir thank you so much sir for uh, making the concept of design thinking simpler and easy to understand uh, for all of us and underscoring the importance of uh, empathizing with the end user free thinking ideating before identifying a solution and i'm sure like you said there would be questions in our audience's mind uh, but i would request them to put the questions in the q and a and chat box and our experts will uh, address those questions at the end of the session uh yeah uh, so uh, i would now invite uh, mr raj pat to uh, enlighten us on the business model canvas sir sorry let me start by saying that you know enlighten uh, big very big word i don't think i am you know in any way qualified to enlighten anyone for that matter what i can do is at best i can share some thoughts uh, you know on the on the topic that we have for today uh, let me start by thanking professor dash for uh, setting the context of uh, design thinking in the entrepreneurial process okay so that is uh, uh, a very important distinction that uh, i would like to draw at this moment because even the topic that i'm going to talk about you know you can discuss it in various under different scopes like you know business models i mean you can endlessly discuss the business model of a large company like say reliance or something like that but we are nowhere near that we are all early stage startups right we are we are still figuring out uh, uh, what we need to do uh, whether we'll be successful or not so all these learnings that we are talking about whether it is design thinking and now followed by the uh, uh, business model process uh, is actually a method to the madness okay so i just wanted to share this because students are there you know and students like to kind of understand it from different levels of perspective uh, so the current thinking in entrepreneurship uh, uh, methodology is uh, called as the customer development process okay and a lot of thought has gone into it so you would hear terms like the lean startup process and you know customer these are all customer development process remember i was an entrepreneur in 1995 okay so entrepreneurship existed even then entrepreneurship exists today and probably entrepreneurship is going to definitely going to be you know existing years from now what has happened is the way entrepreneurs approach the entrepreneurial uh, things saying this i said that you know uh, professor dash here started by saying that in today's world you know we should move away from the product centric approach which is absolutely right 
uh why because the human mind is like this that you know whenever we see a problem uh, we want to you know go and solve it and entrepreneurs are more than ever willing to go out and first create a solution uh that they think uh, you know is going to work with the customer unfortunately it is not as simple as that maybe 20 years back you know you found a problem you know you you just went ahead created a product you know made as many products try to figure out how to make the product cheaper and better and faster and then try to sell it to as many customers and possible and possibly you could be a successful company but just think about it today right i mean in today's world uh, you know uber which is like one of my favorite examples uh, is what i mean it's 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 not definitely not a, a, a new or a very innovative idea right i mean car hiring services have been there for probably i don't know as long as the automobiles have been there so if you look at it car hiring was there maybe 50 years back car hiring was there about 20 years back car hiring is there today what is uber done is uber has kind of taken that same concept okay and created based on what the current consumers are wanting it and of course now with everybody having mobile everybody having a mobile internet they have tried to put it into a wonderful user experience right so what you see as uber okay is not just a car service the car services at the back end it's not the software the software is there uh, that is running on the system and on your mobile it's the user experience okay and where did this user experience come from from this concept of design thinking that we uh, just understood in which we kept the customer at the center asked the customer what he wanted how did he want it you know and what are the things that he loved about uh, you know uh, hiring a car and what are the things that he hated about hiring a car and then the service was perfected okay so always keep in mind we are moving away from the product centric approach to what is called as a customer centric approach that means we'll always keep the customer at the center now this is you know as we say lot of times we have heard this statement that customer is king you know we need to listen to the customer and then mahatma gandhi is that favorite statement as that customer is the most important person on our premises all has been there what is not gone or percolated down uh, into the mind of the entrepreneur is the fact that the customer preferences have changed over a period of time okay and we need to figure out how do we become successful we don't to want to start up a company which was exactly like a company somebody had started in 1980 or for that matter we don't want to start up something which somebody has already started in the year 2000 okay what is the difference technology has changed consumer preferences has changed the way people you know when we were growing up there was nothing like you know videos that you could see and learn from like then came youtubes now youtube is getting replaced by tiktok videos people don't have the patience to even watch a 20 minute videos so you know the consumer preferences has changed so let me take you through i know i have a big challenge uh, because uh, this is usually a topic that you know that's like a workshop model and you know and you can spend a lot of time discussing this i am trying to kind of uh, uh, try and fit it up into a very very quick and easy format but i like i said we live in the world of tiktok videos right so this is not going to be a long lecture probably think of this as a quick introduction to this concept called as business models business models is very simple it's a very simple concept you know it in if you have to define it in one line it is probably called as show me the money okay what is show me the money is okay as an entrepreneur you have ideas you think you know the customer you think you have the technology you think you can use the technology to make a product and you believe that the product will be bought by the customer and the customer is going to pay you a lot of money and you are going to become rich you know quick and maybe become that unicorn or something like that and in this whole process you forget the concept that the business fundamental right is to make money okay so today you see a lot of businesses and people talk about it that zomato is not making money or you know uh, paytm is probably making so many losses part of it which is all fine i mean when you look at the process maybe from a larger perspective they have a bigger game plan uh, in place and so maybe 
they will make money not now but maybe in the year 2030 but we don't know we are small startups right we are small startups tomorrow if we need to start let us assume you are going to start something on monday you know the 8th of may and you want to start something right you are not a unicorn you don't have that kind of money you don't that have that kind of you know backing you will need to start off very small make sure that it survives make sure that you make some money and then probably grow and of course then once venture capital funding comes and you know god bless all of us for venture capitals and you know maybe 100 unicorn we have right now maybe 200 unicorn will be somebody from the v school uh, audience out over here but that is thing into the future let us tackle the present the way it is and that is what i'm trying to go to do i'm trying to develop what is called as the problem and the solution fit so problem is something that you know probably you use the design thinking methodology to identify a certain amount of problem you know you empathized with the customer you ideated on various kind of solutions you prototyped it you kind of you know tested it and you kind of you know uh, come up with something that you think is going to work my fundamental question is will you make money when trying to solve the problem okay because you don't want to be building something that is going to cost a huge amount of money and the customer is just not willing to pay for it and we have some very bad examples about it okay so let us step back a bit and i talked about this concept that you no know, customer preferences are changing okay so what customers really want uh, you know is something that we will have to really figure out uh, as we go along part of it okay and to do that we have to understand and i am going to use this uh, concept uh, or use this term called as jobs to be done okay we need to understand when we say that a customer has a particular problem that needs to be solved what we are saying is that the customer is actually expecting a job to be done okay so when we find out what is that job to be done can we develop something some you know a secret sauce maybe a secret weapon that will help us solve this customer problem or get the job to be done and in that process can we make money okay that is the big challenge we need to try and understand and how do we do that we do that by under, by building something called as a business model around our proposed solution okay proposed solution we have not yet still made the solution we have a solution in mind we think that the solution is what you know the customer is probably interested in buying but we need to understand is there money in the whole process okay so let us start by first defining what is a business plan is a is a business model business plan everybody understands right and we are all students we know what a business plan is within a part of a course you know it is probably that 100 or 200 page of document that you actually make to tell people how your business is going to work out and you know you put some graphs and then you say in the first year i am going to sell 10000 units in the fifth year i am going to sell 1 million units and you give this hockey chart kind of uh, you know a graph and you have all the picture painted you know into the future it's like you know students saying that you know in my first year i am going to score 60% marks in my second year i am going to do 65% marks in my final year i am going to get a gold medal that is wonderful okay that's absolutely good that is the red shiny car on your left hand side which is good because you need to have that big picture of what it is going to be but what is a business model a business model is actually the engine that is there under the car right hum log bahut baar okay and lot of times we go to a showroom hum log car dekhte hain brochure dekhte hain bahut badhiya uske advertisements dekhte hain lekin hum jab bhi kuch kharidne jate hain kya hum andar uske car ke niche jaake do we get under the hood of the car and figure out what is it that really drives the car okay what is the engine how is it mounted what is the mileage that is going to give what is the kind of exhaust it's going to generate what is the kind of power it is going to be you know generating we don't do that we actually you know keep that thing under the hood and say acha theek hai theek hai theek hai you know pata nahi same thing is with business most of the times you go to any business guys and this has been my experience and tell them what are you going to do in the future and they will say sir you know in the next year i'm going to hire 20 more people i'm going to develop three more products i'm going to sell open five more offices i'm going to sell you know 2000 more you know units stuff like that i'm going to make so and so money but it's all you know like i would use a marathi phrase because i see a lot of marathi 
ऑडियन जर तर गोषी अपन ज्यादा कि जर अल सर मैं तस करीन सगे सग फ्यूचर जो प्लैन है बिजनेस प्लैन मनु बिजनेस मॉडल इज दी सीम्पल कॉन्सेप्ट की आर यू गोइंग टू मेक मनी टू दे इज युअर बिजनेस डिजाइंड इन दी फॉर्मैट दैट इट इज गोइंग टू मेक मनी एंड दैट इज अ वेरी वेरी क्रुशल क्वेश्चन वाई इज इट अ क्रुशल क्वेश्चन ये आज इम्पॉर्टेंट क्यों है आप सब लोग शार्क टैंक देखते होंगे राइट एंड इट्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट पॉपुलर शोज नाउ वेर एवर आई गो एंड टॉक टू स्टूडेंट दिस सर हम लोग शार्क टैंक देखते हैं बहुत अच्छा लगता है यू you नो know, और बहुत कॉम्पिटिटिव लगता है हर जगह पे अगर आप देखो तो शार्क टैंक में वही वो लोग एक बेसिक कोर सवाल पूछता है कि आप इस बिजनेस में पैसे कैसे बनाओगे या हमको क्या मिलेगा बिकॉज अ शार्क टैंक इज एन इन्वेस्टमेंट राइट इफ आई इन्वेस्ट समथिंग इन टू यू unless you make money i am never going to make money that is fundamental and if i don't know or even if you don't know how are you going to make money you have a great product you have great technology python mein banaya hua hai maine ye technology use kiya hai sir maine israel se import kiya hua hai bahut acha hai lekin agar aap paise nahi banaoge to main agar if i am an investor in your company how will i make money right i can make money only if you make money and that is where the business model concept comes into the picture so try and understand that business models you may find you know are ye to bahut simple hai ya ye bahut complicated hai jo bhi hai at the end of the day there are two diagrams that you know every investor or anybody wherever you pitch for are going to expect and we are going to briefly touch upon those two formats that you need to understand uh, when you go for it okay so let's look at this concept what has happened See in the last hundred years or so, na, it was a different world when we were growing up, right? When we were growing up, there was only one scooter or two cars, like you know, Bajaj scooter, Hamara Bajaj. Whether you want to buy a scooter or there was one Lambretta, but that was you know five percent market, and it was one Bajaj scooter and Bajaj, and you had to wait for twelve years to uh, you know uh, get a Bajaj scooter, or if you had a phone, then you had to wait because there was only one company called as Mahanagar Telephone. Uh, which used to give telephones in mumbai so if you wanted a telephone you had to wait probably for 8 or 10 years to do that why because the supply was low you know there were no choices available we were told whatever we were told for example look at these ads i mean they are not ads from india but you can give a get a fair idea about what the world was maybe 50 years back also where we were told by advertising that this is what it is and you should buy it okay so we were told that this is a great you know medicine for curing your cold so wicks okay so everybody ended up buying wicks or if you wanted to uh, get a sparkling white teeth then you need to use the colgate toothpaste so there was an advertising there was different medium television came somewhere in the 70s 80s there was radio and there were you know banners and hoardings and all so whatever you could tell people you know uh, people would listen and people would probably buy that product and all that and everything was fine it was nice going on for the uh, market year because you know they didn't need to innovate anything they just need to make one product for so many years and people would either buy it or not buy it like people who didn't afford the colgate uh, uh, toothpaste ended up buying what is called as the monkey brand of you know dant manjan so no either toothpaste dant manjan khatam ye do uske andar khatam and colgate never made dant manjan and dant manjan guys could never make the toothpaste part of it different category the world was very simple uh, divided into people who had car and the car was only option was a fiat car or an ambassador car and people who did not afford to buy a car that was a very simple world i thought it was there but what has happened in today's world is very important today the world has become like a supermarket i right and everybody has gone through a supermarket right and what happens in the supermarket is very simple there are rows of products different companies what of you go to a shampoo there will be probably 10 12 15 types of shampoo and there is just next to it and you just ask through them without even realizing that there is a new brand or a new product or something that has come you don't know you know you are so distracted you are not seeing the ad you don't believe whatever it is part of it and life just moves ahead part of it and you feel like you i mean so if you are a startup and just imagine right and everybody knows making a soap is such a simple thing you can i can also make soap at home but who is going to buy our soap nobody is going to buy our soap for the simple reason is we just don't stand a chance because the customer attention has reduced and there are too many options available for a customer okay so when we talk about you know product failures 
should we always say you know small companies product failures no see there are four products that are been put out over here that are all been manufactured by world class companies okay like google class was from company called google the satellite the phone that you see is from motorola on your right hand side you see an apple newton product okay and these are amazing products millions of dollars were spent in making those products and millions of dollars were spent in advertising those products unfortunately none of those products were successful okay and large companies spend millions of dollars doing that so as startups can we afford it i don't think so first we don't have that is why this approach that is why we, you know google glass i would say that probably a product ahead of its time maybe you know maybe it will come back in another 5 years time in a different format we don't know there is already a company called oculus nest which uh, does a lot of vr ar you know kind of uh, stuff like that <clears throat> it's a facebook company we don't know where the only concept that we can tell about very confidently is why this product failed because they none of them followed any design thinking pro- principles none of them ever went out to a customer and said are baba tumko ye product chahiye ki main aise hi bana raha hu laboratory mein okay so google glass kept it under wraps and said okay we are going to surprise a customer with a product look at the indian nano car for that matter also i mean i didn't want to put up a nano car because there could be something people saying that no no it didn't fail because of something else nano was also to my you know understanding of the product was something that you know lot of design thinking went into it but i don't think they actually asked the customer about why they what is it about the nano car that they wanted unfortunately i don't know if you know in 2020 there was only one nano car that was sold in the whole year so can you beat this i mean a company a product from a company like tata motors and one car is sold in the whole year okay so this can become disastrous see these are large companies they can afford to make such mistakes you know maybe Uh, repeat those mistakes in some cases but as small startups we will never be able to afford to make this in. so what do we want to think about we want to know that something has changed and uh, we need to be aware as entrepreneurs about what is it that has changed and we need to make sure that we understand the change and we are able to use the change for our benefit right that is what smart entrepreneurs do understand change and see how i can benefit from that change okay so simple concept that i'm going to talk about today which some of you may not understand matlab aap bologe kya sir aap kya bakwas kar rahe ho ye aisa kabhi hota nahi hai aur you know hamare yahan pe to aise nahi hota hai ya maine aise hote hue nahi dekha hai you have full right i mean you have full right to disagree with me and i don't uh, you know get into arguments with people who disagree with me okay because this is not politics okay so i don't want to huh? i am going to going to share what is the thinking common around and probably be good so the first concept you have to understand is that we have stopped buying products and services we don't buy products and services okay for example now this phone okay now the phone i got okay apple phone uh, if i tell you that i have not bought this phone and i have merely hired it for uh, something that the phone does to me Okay, try and understand this concept. Yeah, that doesn't mean that I I pay an EMI on this. Yeah, but not really hiring hiring in the sense of EMI. I just want to bring out this concept that in today's world, okay, and this is a very important uh, concept that you have to understand. Let us assume that you are a uh, you know you are a, 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 a craftsman and you are going to drill a hole. राइट यू कैन गो एंड टेल अ कस्टमर सर आप मैंने जो जो ड्रिल बिट यूज किया है ना वो प्योर प्लेटिनम का है ओके okay? प्लेटिनम आपको मालूम है कि दुनिया का सबसे महंगा वाला मेटल है तो मैंने जो ये होल्स बनाए हैं दीवार में आपके उसको मेरे को आपको मेरे को उसके एक हजार रुपए देने पड़ेंगे पर होल के कस्टमर बोलेगा वाई बिकॉज नो आई हैव यूज प्लेटिनम ड्रिल बिट कस्टमर इज वो कम बैक एंड अरे बॉस how does it matter to me whether you have used a platinum drill bit or you have used a metal drill bit i don't care mere ko ek hole bana ke chahiye tha aur jo hole banaya main sirf hole ke paise deta hu main drill bit ke paise nahi deta this is a very very important concept okay you and i have not uh, developed this concept this concept has been done there is enough research work that has happened in the last 20 years you know in places like uh, harvard university where Where the concept has come that people are paying 
okay for the not for the product but what the product can do okay think about it slightly different when i say ki what people are paying is not for the product but what the product can do what is called as the value proposition now typically i would show you a 4 minute video uh, on this over here but we don't have time we're slightly running out of time i don't want to show this video but this video basically establishes this concept that it is not come from raj bhat who sitting somewhere and you know giving us this gyan but it's it's a well developed concept um, in harvard and some of the experiments that they conducted and some of the results that they got it all documented in the form of a very interesting theory and a book okay and based on that but you know the idea here is not to kind of tell you about it but the idea is to kind of reassure you you know that this is a valid concept and i'm going to develop something more about this concept as we go ahead okay so what is it that we talk about now my favorite example it's my favorite example all of you have gone okay at different times okay sometimes you have gone to pizza hut and sometimes you have ordered pizza from a domino's pizza right see i use the phrases very differently i said some of times you have gone to pizza hut and sometimes you have ordered pizza from domino's pizza you will say why sir you know probably we can also order uh, pizza from pizza hut and we can also go to domino's pizza and eat yes possible right but if you think back if you think back and you look at it both of them and i'm going to tell this very clearly both of them are not selling you pizzas okay though you think that you have paid for the pizza you have eaten the pizza but let me tell you that they have actually not selling you pizza and why is that because think of all when did you go to pizza hut and when did you order pizza from domino's pizza okay same you same person probably reacting to different situation domino's pizza very simple excellent company when it comes to delivering pizza to wherever you are maybe you are in office maybe you are you know at your home mostly you are at home okay and you are hungry in the afternoon you don't want to go and cook anything for yourself you know you are just tired to do that you want something hot and fresh and you want something something you know delivered instantly so best thing that comes to mind is domino's pizza pick up the phone they have all your details because you know registered phone pick up the app everything is there you know just choose not major you know non veg nahi khane wale sirf veg khate hain to only three pizzas three sizes so out of nine pizzas you select one quickly and then press the button and 30 minutes somebody rings the bell and the pizza is delivered at your house very simple right and they have built a fantastic system uh, around this okay come to pizza hut pizza hut is different it is probably located at a very wonderful uh, uh, location probably in a mall with a nice setting over there you know you are meeting a friend uh, you know it's nice evening it's again the 4 o'clock but this time this 4 o'clock is in a, in the mall okay so now you want to meet up with someone you sit at pizza hut you know there is a nice uh, english speaking waiter who comes there nobody bothers you much you sit over there as long as you want you wait for your friends you talk to your friends get some pizzas order blah 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 and enjoy the pizza and you feel good about it there is a bell in pizza hut i don't know if you know that so if you like the pizza experience you just go and ring the bell and you know everybody says yes thank you sir thank you so much pizza hut so what has happened same two people same two different you know uh, situations you did something differently right and now let us look at the business model aspect part of it right because typically our thinking is like this our thinking is like this that my mother makes a much better pizza than dominos pizza and pizza hut okay dominos pizza and pizza hut, which is possible because everybody's mother makes wonderful pizzas right so your mother makes super pizza very good now what you want to do you want to beat dominos pizza you want to beat pizza hut so you say okay 10 inch pizza in dominos is 200 rupees delivered in 30 minutes i am going to give 12 inch pizza okay 12 inch pizza delivered in uh, uh, priced at 180 rupees and uh, delivered in 25 minutes where does this thinking come from because right from childhood you have been taught that if you want to beat something you have to make things either better you have to make things cheaper you have to make things faster then you can you know uh, beat anybody okay that means ek uh, apple phone banana hai bahut easy hai aapko thoda bada wala apple phone banana hai zyada features dalne hain saste mein usko price karna hai aur zyada jaldi se zyada launch 
to work what happens is fundamentally try and ask this question who's getting the pizza base you know cheaper dominos and pizza hut why because they buy in bulk who's getting the cheese cheaper dominos and pizza okay they because they are buying in bulk who's getting the vegetables cheaper dominos and pizza hut why because they are again buying in so now what you are doing is just because you want to beat competition you are making a bigger pizza lesser price and trying to deliver it faster in which case you are ex, you know incurring more expense at the same time you are losing money every pizza right because you are now buying expensive and selling it cheaper this is the sure shot way of finishing off with your money that you have in your pocket your mother would have made probably the best of the pizzas in the market unfortunately you did not realize that pizza hut and dominos pizza were not selling pizza at all okay pizza hut was selling a product which was hidden from your view it was a product called as experience and dominos pizza was selling you a product called as convenience okay experience and convenience at what were you selling you were selling a pizza okay what was the customer buying the customer was either buying experience you know when you sit in pizza hut doesn't matter it's more for a friend lovely place nice place nice ambience you know good things good vibes coming and you go and ring a bell feel good about it pizza hut all about convenience you press a button you need that pizza in less than 30 minutes okay this is not pizza business at all if somebody really wants to eat pizza they should go to a pizzeria like pizza express which is 75 different types of pizzas Uh, probably in large cities you can find out a pizza express point but they are not competing with a dominos pizza and a pizza they don't sell 30 minutes or free they don't sell you know bell bajao they have nice 70 by pizzas you if you really want to eat pizza probably you can go and you know uh, look at a pizza express so what has happened over here we didn't understand this concept called as value proposition okay what is value proposition that in today's world today's world everything that we do everything that we do is something that you know uh, uh, is not really the product mean jisme marathi mein like we say na dista tasa nasta okay jo dikhta hai wo nahi bikta hai so what is it the problem is that there is an underlying value proposition that uh, you know that people are actually buy okay and let me give an example sometimes the example might sting a bit and you may say sir no 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 i am not doing this this is not for me you know maybe yes probably you know you are one of those outlier customers who still going to a pizza hut to eat pizza and stuff like that and you may be a connoisseur of pizzas and i don't know to argue with but at the end of the day i want to give you a couple of other examples that you know uh we talk about over here okay let's take a simplest example of ipl okay how many of you believe ipl is cricket right it's a stupid question right because ipl is not cricket because if it was cricket then it would be a totally different way it would have been presented a totally different way it would have been consumed ipl is purely entertainment okay packaged as cricket yes because cricket is a game so you go and see this 20 you know two teams playing for 20 20 overs and blah 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 somebody is winning somebody is losing you know mumbai indians uh, uh, five time winners are not one only i have one probably now only one match or something in the current ipl so you know it's a matter of topic of discussion you know and you it doesn't matter so when you go actually to an ipl match okay what happens is it doesn't matter who's batting who's wrong you just want to go there spend for 4 hours shout scream hopefully you know people will watch you on television and you will be shouting and screaming whichever team is there whether it is rajasthan royals winning playing you know with uh, hyderabad whatever t-shirt is available you are going to wear shout scream 4 hours nice fun you are going to come back relax because what you bought for that you know 1000 2000 rupees you spent when you went into an ipl stadium to watch that match it was not really that you know you are so concerned that you know you actually told your t-shirt and say are yaar rohit sharma ne aaj fir dhoka de diya you just went there as an entertainment part of it right and like any other major league tournaments okay it is it is a sport which is packaged at the core of it is something called as entertainment think about it think about why people buy an apple phone okay at the end of the day it's a mobile phone if it's a mobile phone then a 10000 rupees phone is also has the same thing it has got whatsapp it has got facebook it can help you watch youtube tvs it has got storage it has got camera you can dial you can have 4g blah 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 but apple is not a 10000 rupees phone right 
and if it was such a phone and if you really you know wanted to buy a car for that matter you would keep that car for 20 years you need to change the car every 3 4 years you need to change your mobile every uh, you know 18 months why because you are not buying the product you are just hiring the product hiring hiring means for a small period of time you are using the product for your own utility and when that utility is over mba education okay and i i know i, I I, I'm talking to a to an MBA institute students also over here. At the end of the day, how many of you believe that we join an MBA program? I never went through an MBA program because I wanted to learn the latest in marketing or finance or anything. I just went there because I thought that an MBA education would give me a better job, a better salary, a better career prospect, right? So that is exactly what an MBA education. It looks like education. It looks like a master's degree. It is packaged as a master's degree, but at the core of that master's degree is career. Okay. Can you think of an MBA institute which has a great library, fantastic professors, great research happening? You know, a lot of books in the libraries, big lectures and guest lectures, but no placements. Okay. What will happen to that MBA education? I don't know. I mean, people would just not want to kind of go there and uh, do that. Same thing is with travel, right? I mean, the first thing that we want to go on a travel on a holiday is we want to start posting our pictures right from the airport. Okay. Waiting at Chhatrapati, Shivaji, Maharaj, Terminus, happy to go to France and blah, blah, blah. We go to Eiffel Tower. Okay. First thing we want to do is not see what Eiffel Tower is or what you know, how, how uh, greatly it was built and what is the history behind it. We want to click selfies. We want to post it on uh, Instagram and the next five minutes, we want to also check how many likes we are getting. And we are, we get worried if, you know, we go to Eiffel Tower, click photos, put on Instagram and nobody likes it. You know, we are going to be very sad. The whole purpose of holiday was to give you peace of mind, but now instead of peace of mind, it is troubling you. Okay. So basically whether it is a fancy dining experience that you want to go to or a foreign holidays, think about it. Ask yourself this question. What is the real reason? What is the real reason that, you know, I am buying this product? What is the reason for somebody buying an Apple phone? Okay. Is it aspiration? Maybe yes. They just want, is it show value? Maybe you want to tell your neighbor that you are doing extremely well in life. You know, maybe you want to tell your relatives that you are growing up in your career. That is the reason you are only hiring this phone for a certain amount of time. Okay. And as and when that hiring part is over, it is probably, you know, you're going to just change it. You're going to kind of, you know, move into something else. And MBA education is also like this, right? So you hire the institute for two years. So the institute gives you a degree, but at the end of the day is also give, you know, giving you the value proposition is called as the uh, you know, is, is the career that is option. So these are some of the commonly, you know, used value propositions that, uh, we have in the world today. This is not a complete full and final list. So don't look at it and say, okay, sir, it nahi hai, kya nahi. I've just kind of, you know, quickly picked up, uh, uh, quick value propositions and said, this is what, you know, people are buying today's world, right? Okay. For example, in experience few years back, if you wanted to experience good food and blah, blah, blah. Okay, we would probably go to a garden restaurant or a beach side restaurant or, you know, go there. But today our experience is what, you know, sitting at home, nicely in sitting in front, watch, watching Netflix, we want to order something. So whole definition of the word experience itself has changed. Okay, if you look at security, few years back, probably you would be very happy if there were some guards posted in your building. But today, if you really look at high scale apartments, not only guards are there, there are CCTV cameras, and then there is, you know, uh, drone security systems available, part of it. So the definition of security has changed. And what does this mean to an entrepreneur? It means to an entrepreneur that the core value proposition has only remained the same. Only thing is people are consuming different products to get that same value proposition. Okay. So entrepreneurs are smart. Entrepreneurs really understand that, you know, you no know, hiring car was a great convenience 30 years back. But if today's world, if you really want to have large number of customers, you need to build in a layer of technology. You need to kind of, you know, add and, you know, app, you know, put it to the customers and then gives the birth to this company is called as Uber or Ola or something. Leisure, look at it, you know, maybe when I, I was growing up, leisure was going out in the ground and, you know, playing football with my actual friends and, uh, you know, getting uh, 
dirty in the mud and all that but today my son who's a teenager okay for him leisure is online gaming i mean he still plays football but he plays on that fifa you know gaming part of it right so what has happened leisure has remained the same only thing is entrepreneurs you know maybe 20 years back uh, you know uh, football coaching was a uh, was a great business opportunity today teaching people how to play football online is a great uh, uh, you know opportunity by the way there are online gaming tournaments that happen and then there are sponsors who sponsor teams from you know different parts of the country and send them internationally for the gamings and there is a lot of money involved uh, you know uh, part of it same thing is about social recognition just remember that you know if you wanted to be somebody very socially important you know you had to become you know going to a social organization probably uh, you know become the chairman or the secretary of the social organization maybe you know politics or you know, for the social. today we are all social media leader social media influencer social media there are you know people pay a ton of money to become a social media uh influencer today and what do social media influencer do they are basically doing nothing but propagating you know a message from you to hundreds and thousands of other people that they own over okay so this concept of value proposition is at the core of understanding a business model if you don't understand value proposition remember that example i gave you about you know trying to make a bigger pizza a cheaper pizza and trying to do it faster it is just not going to work okay because customers have changed customer preferences have changed the way customer look at something has changed right so that is that is the core at which you have to understand is the value proposition and how is the value proposition canvas uh, important is this is the format of the value proposition canvas you can go online any place uh, any place and see you know uh, this particular format there are online tools available to you to capture the value proposition and uh, you know represent it as to what is the product so the typical canvas and if you can see my cursor this is round part okay this is where the customer and look at the face this is actually what the customer is telling you and this is the product and the service that you are going to be developing okay and this should match if it doesn't match something is wrong that means either the customer is telling you something you are not listening or you have developed a product that the customer is not going to want so unless and until there is this fitment over here you see the two uh, meeting over here if you see this two arrows then what you have achieved is what is the customer trying to tell you okay that i want convenience so look at the dominos pizza model when you say convenience dominos pizza has so smartly converted that into uh, you know how they deliver it right they don't ask you too many questions on your address because your address is already there they don't give you too many choices because then you are going to wait see what is convenience convenience means fast quick immediate jaldi lao abhi lao okay if there were 75 pizzas then you would only scroll through 75 pizzas fir kya fayda if you are going to take 30 minutes to order and then expect another 30 minutes to deliver the pizza then it is no fun okay so dominos has made it very simple they have your address they have given you only limited choices that they want to kind of quickly you know help help you get choose part of it okay and they are image they of course have invested a lot in technology at the back end so they have huge machines which can churn out pizza the moment you click on the button somebody has already loaded that pizza out over here and they also figured out the logistics of taking a pizza from point a to point b the beauty is dominos does it in a brilliant manner which you and i don't understand is they when you order something over there they try to upsell you something okay so you would have thought of ordering a 200 rupees pizza but somebody would tell you that sir if you can upgrade this pizza to a, a bigger pizza then you can get a free coke and if you get buy a free coke then they'll give you a free cookie and then they'll give you something so what you thought about ordering for about 200 rupees now suddenly is a 300 rupees order now why is it brilliant basically because what dominos has done is if they are going to deliver you something at fast at speed at your convenience at your place would they love to deliver a higher value product or a lower value product obviously a higher value product right so that is why what they do is they'll always upsell you always always think about upselling you and do pizza hut on the otherwise what is it selling it's not selling convenience it's selling experience it doesn't rush you it doesn't force you pizza hut believes that the more longer you sit you will eventually end up ordering more and more part of it okay and that is what they want you to do they want you to come sit experience order and uh, you know 
do that so this is a very very important uh, uh, concept that you have to understand in terms of the value proposition canvas how do i capture the value and how do i kind of build a product or a service around it so what i have done is because we have students from you know various uh, backgrounds and i couldn't really find a common thing that i wanted to do so i just kind of uh, you know uh, on, uh, i just kind of did a quick and dirty uh, you know uh, format in which i have kind of said that let us assume that we want to develop uh, a electric vehicle a car right i mean today elon musk is all over the news and uh, you know uh, either people love him hate him i don't know what it is but i think that he is a person who is going to fundamentally change the way we do a lot of things in this current century okay so let us assume that you know we 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 stumbled upon this great thing that we want to do is we want to build a small you know electric vehicle car right i mean it's 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 going to be the future right look at petrol what today is 119 rupees uh, diesel is also about 100 rupees so you know fossil based things are going to be a lot of Uh, for the first time i think in this year probably electric uh, two wheelers will be sold as much as the uh, regular two wheelers and probably next year onwards the number is just going to go uh, massively in favor of electric two wheelers and i see a lot of young people today opting for electric two wheelers and stuff like that. so let's assume that we want to kind of make a quick uh, uh, you know value proposition canvas and uh, try and understand as to how do we kind of so as we said in design thinking we have to keep the customer persona at the center okay customer is there because not everybody is going to buy our electric vehicle not everybody right i mean today that whole concept ki aapka product kon kharidega har koi kharidega doesn't work that way right there is a particular segment of the customer only who buys a certain thing look at television channels so not everybody sees everything that is available on television right there are some people who see only sports part of it there are some people who see only you know family serials there are some people who will only see crime thrillers part of it right not that they don't see sports on some days but mostly they are you know they are known to consume a particular product of their liking so this is the customer persona so i have just quickly uh, drawn you know an, a, a customer persona you know could you can refine it Uh, as much as want but try and visualize what the customer for a small electric vehicle car is going to look like somebody in the age group of maybe 25 35 please understand it's a small electric car okay so the underlying word is small also compact let's call it not small electric car 25 35 okay maybe married maybe married with one kid maybe married with one kid and one small kid maybe at the you know at 35 probably two kids but at 28 probably just one kid small male or female doesn't matter because you know today cars can be bought by any other probably in the urban and semi urban towns when i say urban and semi urban towns why because various reasons and we will see why uh, uh, the you know people in urban and semi urban towns are more prone to you know, probably earning about 40 to 75000 per month not major i mean you know if he was earning definitely more than that it probably go for a regular car or a, you know mid size sedan or something like that part of it what is the person's background looks like probably a graduate or a post graduate probably an entrepreneur self uh, you know uh, self earning person or even if he is working he or she is working is probably at a mid level executive and definitely active on social media probably instagrams linkedins and you know uh, facebooks of the world and of course you can deep down and say what are the what are the things that they like and what are the things that you know hobbies and all that but we don't want to get into too much detail of this customer persona just for the lack of time but the better you know your customer persona remember the concept of empathy in design thinking that we talked about is empathy is when you put yourself in the shoes of the customer and the customer and you feel actually like a customer and that is the beauty of thinking like a customer is that you start experiencing it uh, yourself over here so if you can visualize this person in your mind close your eyes and these are probably the people that you are going to be let us assume i don't know you are in your final year or anything like that but you are in your early 20s but maybe another 5 years time just visualize yourself and so ki kya ye main hu 25 se 35 you know uh, earning probably 75000 a month yes i am a post graduate i am working i am probably mid level executive i am active and i am looking for a very small car for my family and you know uh, i think okay so this is what 
is the customer persona. And what does this customer persona want? This is the jobs to be done, JTBD. Okay. So if you go back and see, this is, I'm now talking about this block. I just dis described this customer over here. Now I'm describing this block over here. So this is the loca. So what is it that I want it done? I want it that it must actually carry at least four passengers because I don't want it. It's not like a Innova car or a, you know, um, a bigger car, Ertiga or something like that. It has to be compact size by because compact size cars are easy to park, you know, uh, you can take it in traffic. It should have some decent storage capacity because in Indian concept, you know, we can't have a car which is like compact and nothing to carry. So we typically kind of, you know, want to uh, have some storage part of it. We would prefer an elegant design. We don't want a very bad looking design because it's a small car or it's a cheap car. I mean, we are definitely wanting standard, you know, safety features like probably, you know, it should have uh, sturdy you know, things. If it bangs, I don't know if it can afford to have uh, airbags and all that because airbags are an expensive accessory, but we want some standard safety features. And we would prefer that if it comes from a reputed brand, you know, uh, that will give us some confidence because at the end of the day, you know, you and I can also go back to our engineering workshop and probably try and build a car, but you know, Raj's car or, you know, something like this car might not really go fly high with the customer in terms of confidence. So brand is something that customers look for, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, kind of confirmation saying that, but when I'm wanting this car, there are two things that I do okay one is called as i'm looking for gains gains means is potentially if i can get something extra and uh, you know i'm trying to avoid some pains okay pains are those things that i don't want i know you electric car there but you bolo ke uske sath ek you know piche ek bada battery lagana padega ya sar ke car ke upar battery no i don't want all those some of those pains kind of a thing gains are you know typically in the indian mindset no Whenever we buy and think about this yourself, right? When we go to buy this, you know, simple vegetables also in the market, what is it that we expect free? We always expect no, ki that dhania, pudina, mirchi will come free, right? I mean, we go to a market, everybody expects, right? Or when you go and eat pani puri for that matter, I, I don't know. But if you're, if you're in Mumbai and you, uh, you know, go and eat pani puri with that pani puri wala, I know you're not happy with just the six Pani Puris he has given it. You always expect that last dry Puri that, you know, the guy gives. And if he gives, uh, doesn't give, then you're going to not feel happy because you, I mean, you know, this was something that he would say, sir, you have to give six Pani Puris. No, no, but six is okay. Six is what everyone gives. But everybody also gives that extra Puri. You know? So it has become something like an extra. Everybody always thinks in mind. Yeah, if you get a little extra, you know, mil jai, I would be more than happy over there, right? So these are the gains that people are wanting and there are certain pains that they want to avoid over here. Okay. So what is it that they want in terms of gains? They want first thing in gains that they expect is everything economical. In India, it is very simple. Aap kuch bhi de do, lekin, sir, sasta hona chahiye, thoda affordable hona chahiye. They don't mean cheap. Okay. We don't like to buy. If you look at it, we are not like the Chinese mentality that we want to buy fake products, you know, in China, apparently I'm told that for every product that you have, you can actually buy a fake product. Like you can actually buy a fake Apple iPhone or a fake Rolex watch and people actually buy it. India, we don't do that, but India, we like to look at economical things, right? I mean, we want, we want good things, but we want it at a reasonable price. So we're seeing always economical and preferably we would also prefer some comfortable interiors. We could also prefer some choice of colors if we can have uh, in the car. Okay. And what is it that we want to avoid? We want to avoid things like our battery charging. Aisa nahi ho ki every 50 kilometers, I need to charge a battery and there are no battery charging stations available. So what can I do? You know, I don't want to get stuck up in the middle of a road because my car was electric and I could mind. I am also looking at reliable after sales service because, you know, car ko kuch bhi ho sakta hai, you know, kharab ho gai to kaha pe leke jaunga, ye ho. I also, in my mind, I also have this concept na, ki India mein car, when you buy the first thing that comes to your mind is, does it have a, you know, reasonable resale value? And if I want to change this car, will somebody buy this car or will I have to just dump it? And there have been, you know, instances of cars which are very good, but had almost zero, uh, you know, resale value and people who bought them, for example, Nano itself. Now, if you really look at Nano, if you try and go and sell your old Nano right now. I don't think there is a big market for 
the resale of the product over there okay so it is a big fear that it doesn't have the reasonable sale value okay so having discovered this four things this is the most important thing this is the first most important four things that you discover and how do you do that fundamental principles of design thinking think like a customer go and talk to the customer observe the customer okay don't judge okay come back and you know record everything that the customer has told you all those things if you have done properly in your design thinking approach then these four blocks become very easy to fill now what we need to do when we need to move from uh, you know this to this box and this is where we are very comfortable because this is in our control this is the product that we want to develop this is now we exactly know you know customers once you have understood this part then matching this becomes the most easier so what do we do sorry what do we do is we say okay now let us look at the pain relievers that you want you want battery charging hassles okay i have a high capacity battery that i have developed i am going to be putting up a lot of charging stations all over the place so don't worry about it your battery charging hassles are taken care of uh, okay for your after sale service i have tied up with tata sorry i just used randomly a name i have tied up in an ex reputed company for that service centers and i am going to make sure that you know you don't have problem with the after sale service and uh, now you are thinking of resale value i have tied up with olx and you know car wale and i am going to make sure that they are going to give you a great uh, resale price as and when your car you want to sell part of it, okay and what happens to the gains that you are expecting you are expecting economical sir but you realize that we cannot make the car cheaper but what we have done is we have tied up with bajaj finance and bajaj finance is probably going to give you a seven year loan for your car so your emi will be very less see in the indian mind please understand expense spread out over a period of time is also economical if you give them enough facilities you know uh, people will love to buy that basically because they don't look at it as everything that you need so today even apple phones no i mean most people buy apple phones on emi basis cars so definitely people buy on emi basis Their houses people buy on reasonable basis so not that they want to buy cheap ones but they want to buy something that is economical something that doesn't bite them okay okay for comfortable interiors we have upgrades available sir so you know at a slightly higher price you can get a better comfortable interior you can get air conditioner you can get you know some comfort seats and all that but you know everybody has to pay a bit extra so if you, this is how you build your product and then boom then you say okay, okay sir here is what my product looks like so typically what is the price that you know uh, you would want to put for this car anybody here wants to put up in the chat now that you understood what the customer wants you went and designed the car this is by the way an imaginary car okay don't look at it what is it the what is the price that you think uh, you know uh, you should be charging this car anybody just type it in your in the chat what is your feeling you have understood the customer how much do you think you should charge for this car nobody everybody is just logged in nobody is listening chaliye bataiye jaldi jaldi kitna charge karna chahiye is car ka um so there is a response from dr anuradha she says uh, 2 lakh oh lakh mein to madam iphone 13 pro milta hai 10 lakhs yeah bharat dash तुम हमको मार्केट से पहले दिन ही निकाल देगा दिस इज रीजनेबल कार यार कम ऑन इट्स अ लो प्राइस्ड कार यू नो वी आर आइडेंटिफाइड इट यू नो टिपिकल कस्टमर ही इज गोइंग टू प्रोबेबली अर्न से 55 आ सागर देशमुख से इज 5 सागर इज अ बिट एंबिशियस गाय कौस्तुभ गीते आई लाइक योर 3 एंड 1/2 लाख रुपीस kind of a range uh, you know uh, any case any case this is definitely not i mean we may try to make it a, a, a 2 lakh rupees car but if you see uh, professor dash is saying that you know there is a desirability there is a uh, feasibility and then there is an affordability or no part of it yeah siddesh more all the best to you 1 lakh rupees you can make probably out of thermocol okay uh, okay so any case so if, thank god nobody told about 20 25 lakhs of car that is over thanks professor amar 4.5 lakhs looks reasonable enough i leave it up to you as to how much you want to price this car for the whole idea of putting up this exercise was that for you to understand just a minute my mo ah, okay sorry my battery had gone the whole concept here was to make you understand the concept that 
what you designed you didn't design something which was very fancy and you didn't design in your laboratory without asking the customer you designed this keeping the customer at the center of it and then you my best example of a design thinking and my best example of understanding how to build a great product has always been this example of uh, whatsapp okay and we all have been using whatsapp some of us have been using whatsapp for a longer period of time some of you are youngsters so you have been probably using it for the lesser period of time but if you really look at whatsapp you know and what you look at, when you look at whatsapp what is it it's an amazing product which started off so simple it just started off by you know kind of messaging between two people right and you know save the sms cost it used to cost sms to communicate between two people making a call was very expensive sms also used to cost so they said okay now mobiles have internet for internet connections on them why don't we just allow messaging from messaging it went on to groups from groups it went on to allowing within the groups communicating sharing of music sharing of documents then they moved on to making calls on whatsapp then they moved on to making video on whatsapp now they are moved on to making stores on whatsapp now they are going to add payment gateways on whatsapp couldn't whatsapp you know add all these features on day one and then you know kind of uh, give it to the customer they could have but then they would have waited too long and people would have just and somebody else would have come and taken over the market so the best way was launch a product with very simple features it is called as the minimum viable product okay this is a concept which briefly i want to touch upon is a minimum viable product this is not the only car we are going to manufacture this is probably the first car that is going to come if you are going to launch this as a business and as and when our customer comes and tell us are you look your design is this better but can i have more people sit into the car probably we'll come up with a better car bigger car over a period of time okay so this is a typically the lean startup approach to building an enterprise studio okay that's why it's called as a lean startup approach all startups have to become lean in their thinking have to become lean in the way they understand customers and they wave they fastly quickly go ahead and build a minimum viable product okay minimum viable product this is not the final car maybe if the customer tells us that you know something more maybe there is you know uh, not enough space so maybe probably we are going to add some you know um uh, storage in the way of uh, uh, that uh, you know something on top over here so you can carry our luggage out there maybe it doesn't have the fifth tire over here because you try to make it as economically as possible over here right but you try and understand you cannot you cannot price this car at 8 lakhs of rupees you'd love to price this car at 2 lakhs of rupees as somebody right pointed out but you may not be able to make money at 2 lakhs at 8 lakhs people will not buy the car okay because your target segment is that okay the target segment is probably comfortable 3.5 to 5 or 5.5 maximum 5.5 is a higher end but somewhere in that 3.5 and maybe that is where you will have to figure out the how do i build that is where comes the next concept of something called as the business model now try and understand you have understood the customer you have understood what the value proposition that the customer has has bought you need to understand now three things that are important over here okay one is what are the key resources what do you need to build this car okay you need you know great somebody who can manufacture this car as per your specifications you need somebody who can you know market this car at the lowest possible cost uh, you need someone who who can you know design the best batteries over there please understand tesla doesn't make an automobile huh? the very fundamental things tesla when it launched that product x didn't end up building a automobile they said automobile is not our design our core concept is to build a battery based may vehicle automobiles are built by automobile companies and that is how they tied up for the first time and they brought in that you know product x i don't tesla x series and when they first got the taste of the things and then they said now we know what the customer really wants now they have invested into a full fledged automobile manufacturing facility okay so key resources are all those things that you need to make this product so it could be people it could be technology it could be manufacturing facility it could be distribution facility it could be working capital maybe you'll have to go to a bank to you know get some loan to get this started up then you need to figure out what is called as a profit formula okay profit formula is you will have to analyze two things very detailedly one is 
how much does it cost you to get one car out and that includes everything not just the manufacturing of the car but right from the car you know to the hands of the customer that may include keeping it at the dealer's place that may include probably you know uh, giving credit to the dealers giving margin to the dealers till the car reaches the customer how much does it cost you to do that and how much is your customer willing to pay please understand <coughs> ipl does not make money only by inviting you to the stadium to you know watch the match that is just one of the ways ipl makes money ipl makes money in a ton of ways right ipl sells the uh, television rights to some company for thousand ipl uh, you know um, um, uh, auctions the new teams for example this year you have two new teams so the two new teams have been you know paid paid ipl to participate in the tournament they have uh, you know um, they have those t-shirts and blah 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 television rights in stadia rights it's a very complex way in which ipl makes money some of course money they share for example if they are having a match at the vankhede stadium they will get the money but they will also have to share it with the garwari club house which is the owner of vankhede stadium right so one so that money sharing business is there but ipl has made it very clear that i am not just going to rely on one source of revenue same thing you have to figure out in your profit formula is car sales the only way revenue that you are going to get or are you going to get money from after sales services are you going to get money from selling spares are you get to going to get money from you know uh, uh, probably uh, leasing it out to uh, ubers and olas of the world and stuff like that so you will need to figure out a profit formula in which you understand the costing that gets into uh you know cost that gets into each of product that you deliver and what is the price that finally comes to you if you figure this out you are great key metrics is one of the best important uh concept in uh, in understanding a business model what is key metrics is uh, again i want to give the example of probably uh, ipl or i want to give an example of cricket okay so what happens typically is uh we tend to measure success by uh by past results okay like somebody like last semester you scored only 45% marks i want to classify you as an average student or probably even a below average student last 7 8 matches uh mumbai ipl mumbai indians have lost so i just want to classify them as you know a bad team okay doesn't work that way right because past performance is not an indicator of what you can do uh, in the future you know albert einstein was not a really bright student in fact if you know albert einstein the, the, the when he was in schools they insisted that his parents move him to a special school a school for slow learners so you know so if you want to think that you know past performance of you know somebody is the like it's like saying that salman khan's last movie was a big hit so next movie is also going to be a super hit is 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 dangerous because you know in life we realize that past success can be an indicator but definitely is not a um, you know definitive uh, thing that you know it's going to be successful right so key metrics is how do you measure how do you measure you know whether you are successful in the business or not and if you wait for too long to measure that you wait for the period of over for example if ipl were to figure out let us wait till the all the tournament is over till we find out if we have made money or not believe me it it would have closed down it would not have worked for you know 14 15 years now key metrics is a very important concept in which you learn to measure the success of the delivery of your value proposition to your customer persona using the key resources based on the profit formula so that you know that everything is working fine right so it's like an asking rate in cricket right we know what asking rate is right we we, we need to score say whatever 200 runs in 20 uh, 20 over so the simple asking rate at the start of the match is 10 runs per over but by the time by the time we are uh, in uh, at the eighth over and we are still scored only 60 runs the asking rate has gone up and now we need to recalibrate and say hey now if we need to do 200 runs in the remaining 12 overs then we definitely need to score more than 10 runs per over and when that is the key metric and once you understand the key metrics is you realize that you are on the right way 
to uh, you know making it successful and that is very very important in terms of understanding the key metrics so it's very simple as a student you will realize that if you need to score say 60% marks in your final exams and in the mid semester you are still at about 45 50% then you are needing to score more than 65% marks or probably even closer to 70% marks in your second uh, uh, term exams to just cover up for the lack of the first year and this comes very instinctively to entrepreneurs okay we don't need uh, math, great mathematics or statistical tools to do that they instinctively come to know what is the asking rate how much should they be doing how much should the customers be you know how many more customers they need to do how much more need to need them to spend on um, acquiring customers how do they plan their marketing budgets so it all comes of course now there are various tools available that uh, um, entrepreneurs very smartly use to figure out whether the value proposition please understand what is the fundamental of a business model the value proposition has to be delivered to the customer using the key resources based on the profit formula that you have figured and if you are able to measure it clearly then you have your business model canvas this is typically the business model canvas if this is nothing but everything that i have talked about is gets captured onto this document this is a very important uh, uh document that unfortunately or fortunately yeah. in today's world uh people expect you to put it apart so i'm not going to spend time it's a very simple document if you understood all this concept that we have talked about everything gets filled up over here i will share a link uh, that probably sagar can share with you this lean concept is a concept by an indian gentleman in the us called as ash moria Okay, he's written a complete book on this called uh, "Capturing Value Using the Lean Canvas." I'm going to share a video link of this person, and in 20 minutes, he explains you how to fill up this uh, uh, lean canvas. Okay, uh, under a normal circumstances, if this was a workshop, it is the time at which I make teams. Okay, teams of students work in teams and to help up, help you know put up this um, lean canvas over there. There's a a uh, tool online that ash moria has built called as canvanizer.com i'm going to share that also uh, with sagar and he can share it with you uh, this is an online tool that you can use to kind of so have a look at the video think through all the you know explanations that i gave uh, in the past uh, uh, 45 55 minutes that we have and fill up the lean canvas okay and this is how lean canvas is done so what are the typical types of business models this is quickly just for you to understand business models need not mean there is only one way of doing business there are various business models that people have used and perfected over a period of time okay trading you know the east india company was one of the biggest business model that the world had ever seen for almost 300 years for 200 years uh, before that okay so they used trading as a model that means they bought something from somewhere traded it somewhere else made money out of it. manufacturing if you look at you know tata steel as a company probably today is you know using manufacturing as a business model that means it has figured out a way of finding out how to get all the ingredients for steel convert that into uh, steel things and you know then sell it across to distribution is one of the easiest things that you have to understand that how movies are distributed right ajay devgan today is not only an actor he is also a distributor right because what he does is he makes a product and then he talks to about 4000 5000 uh, you know cinema theater operators like the pvr group and all that and says okay now i'm going to have the distribution right for this i'm going to be selling it to you and you need to pay when you make money i'm going to make some money out of it distribution is simple i mean look at the coca cola business right coca cola manufactures it but then there are distributors who pick up those bottles bring it to the retailers and then they sell it okay so retailing very simple you go out check out any store that's a retailing business what's an e-tailing business is anything that you do on the internet is an e-tailing business click and mortar is a concept where you buy some product on the uh, online and where you choose something on online and then you actually go to a physical store to go and get it white labeling is when you manufacture it for somebody else so if you look at all the products that you have today whether it's a sauce or whether it is a you know um, soap or a toothpaste they are all not manufactured by the companies that 
sell them under their brand they're manufactured by smaller companies over there and then they package it in the for you know colgate and they package it the ice creams that you see today quality ice creams are not manufactured by uh, uh, hindustan unilevers okay it's typically a product which is uh, made by smaller companies on behalf of larger companies to do outsourcing we all know i mean the biggest example is infosys today you know it, it does a lot of outsourcing work for uh, foreign companies out there where they you know give it their part okay these are some of the newer business models that we talk about okay cloud based uh, business model is where everything uh, is available as a service so you typically see a saas thing that is happening the software as a service is usually a cloud based uh, Uh, thing in which uh, everything that you need to kind of get up and ready is there available as a software and do that today you look at microsoft also right i mean you don't need to buy any microsoft software or anything like that you just need to pay the subscription netflix is a cloud based business uh, that we can think about because nobody owns anything you don't have a device on which netflix runs or anything like that just connect to the internet log in and you can take it out uh, over there okay so i think we are just right on time 4 minutes to go i would have finished love to have finished 1 minute earlier okay so typically <coughs> these are some of the key learning that we have customers only pay for value they don't pay for product or process or nothing like that they just pay for what the product can do to them understanding the customer persona is probably one of the most crucial things in today's uh, startup uh, success journey okay and understanding what the customer jobs uh, uh, the customer want done you and i cannot sit here on an internet and google something of what the customer wants uh, we have to go out uh, of the building get out of our comfort zone get out into the hot sun go out into the place where your actual customer is there talk to him sit with him him her listen to what they are saying record it and then bring it back and then go about building your product okay so thank you so much uh, for patiently listening i i know it was one kind of a marathon session but uh, i would have loved to make it more interactive loved to probably uh, you know answer some few questions so if you have some questions please go ahead So thank you, sir. Very interesting uh, talk, I would say, and interesting to know why it's uh, you know important not only to get a job wanting to be done for the customer, but also to look for a sustainable advantage, which ultimately would lead to a, a successful business plan or business model. Um, so yes, uh, we have uh, only time for maybe a couple of questions, and I do see one in the chat box. uh if uh, others also have questions they can quickly put it up in the uh, chat box uh though uh, you know this question siddesh has asked is not really about uh, the design thinking um, more of more about you know how to raise the capital uh, maybe if you can quickly throw some light on that sorry what is the question i am trying to see a, it's in the q and a box uh, how to raise capital oh yeah. siddesh more you want to You will definitely need to raise capital if you are planning to sell pizza, and you will need to raise a lot of capital if you want to do that. Okay, raising capital is uh, 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 one of the important uh, uh, that you should have. Okay, while raising capital is uh, somebody's voice. I think it's my uh, raising capital is. Uh, <laughs> important and uh, not so easy okay why because we all grow up hearing some fancy stories of how google raised you know 50 million on day one and you know silicon valley stories and all unfortunately things in india kind of become a slightly uh, tough basically because here we kind of don't trust someone who has not yet started so you know getting funding at a idea level stage is very very crucial but the ecosystem has developed wonderfully well i would recommend all students if they want to seriously about taking up entrepreneurship uh, very early in their career then they should look at a lot of incubation programs that are now available uh, there are a lot of incubators in the close to i mean at last count there are close to 900 incubators both public as well as private uh, in this country a lot of grants available from incubators uh, that are there 
at the place where i am uh, i am at uh, iit mandi we have a very interesting program called as entrepreneur in residence in which we apply you know invite applications and ask people to apply uh, and come and stay at the campus for a year we also pay them a small amount of stipend and in that one year the entrepreneur is expected to you know develop something i mean you have the resources of the whole iit at uh, your resource by the way the example that i used uh, is already a product at uh, iit mandi but it's been made into the form of a three wheeler or rather it's a five wheeler for local transport and it was completely designed in house um, at iit mandi by a very interesting entrepreneur who developed the whole thing on campus for us and it's now there for display for everyone it's going to be commercialized very soon um i think even anand mahindra tweeted about uh, this wonderful product and he's not really a you know what i should say uh, in the strictest sense a very qualified entrepreneur that means he doesn't have a degree in automobile engineering but using uh, basic uh, common sense understanding of how to design a product is developed a wonderful product so raising capital yes keep watching uh, shark tank it's a very good learning i don't know if you'll we'll raise money using shark tank but at least there's a lot of learning that happens over there on what not to do uh, while pitching for capital i think that's a great thing a lot of startups today uh, have successfully raised money but in like i said in india you need to kind of at least be at an mvp stage that means you need to actually have a product that you know have a few users who can uh, verify them and then kind of Uh, we can talk about investing money yeah uh, it is really an interesting uh, discussion happening here and we would really like it to go on and on but uh, we uh, are completely out of time sir um, so uh, and i hope that I you think, know it was uh, as much of no, fulfilling ma'am. yes yes sir so, sorry to interrupt but there's one last question i guess from yes. anu anu the madam i think okay. he as startups right. look for scaling and commercialization what will be the product life cycle in startup as we have heard that needs and wants of customers change so how soon should product have additional benefits added okay so thank you that's a wonderful question uh, uh yeah products uh, technology changes basically faster and with technology changes people's uh, you know uh, preference to technologies changes and this is that that change is happening for a, at a very very fast pace i mean look at the simplest concept of uh, cryptocurrency okay something that people didn't talk about even 2 years back has now become a mainstream topic of discussions over there nfts nobody knew about nfts till people happened and today you have so many startups based on uh, uh, nfts that are happening so yes that is the reason why we can't have a product that is you know uh completely finished and you know ready for shipping those days are gone okay those days are gone so everything is an mvp try and figure this out do you think that the amazon website that you use today is the final website and it is not going to change in the future or if the facebook thing that you are seeing today is the final thing that facebook has figured out and it's not going to change in the future no it will change so jeff bezos made this very fantastic statement he says if we don't do 10000 experiments every month on what works and what doesn't work we will be finished as a company okay so amazon encourages 10000 experiments that means they need they figure out so many different things so every time you go to an amazon you in, in some time you'll find out that they have changed something how have they changed not because some someone sitting in an air conditioned room thought about you know let me change this and see they kept on listening to customers they went back to customers they saw what the customers was really uh, wanting from them and then they went back and rechanged themselves okay so we live in a very dynamic world i mean i know it can be scary at times the speed at which technology changes the speed at which you know who would have thought that you know a 3 minute video uh, platform would become the fastest growing social media engagement platform in the world today okay we have banned it in india for a different reason but tiktok is a global phenomena right and kind of and it is giving even an established product like youtube a run for the money thank you sir thank you very much over to you punam ma'am 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I will. Uh, Sagar has my contact details, so you can share them with you. Uh, sure, I'm sir. available both for mail and uh, on WhatsApp if you want to message. But just message me before you want to call up because uh, that's important. I'll be more than happy to you know, come back and share uh, some additional insights. Sure, sir. I will do the needful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. With this, uh, we come to the end of uh, this very interesting session. And I hope that it was, uh, you know, as much fulfilling experience for our mentee institutes as much it was for us, uh, you know, hosting this uh, event. And I thank all of you for participating today. And I thank our speakers for taking time out from their schedule and discussing with us the idea of design thinking and business canvas model in very simple terms, using very simple examples, which made it all uh, very easy for us. Uh, I would also like to thank our IT team for hosting this event and all the backend support. Thank you, audience. Have a be great weekend, all of you. Namaste. One last, if all of you can just switch on the cameras if possible, please, so that we can take a screenshot. Yeah, that'll be great. Just one sec. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.